Just a quick announcement. I have a new YouTube channel up and running. It's called JP Podcast. If you are a fan of H3 Podcast or Joe Rogan Podcast, you will probably find some interest in that channel of mine that I just started, <laughs> where we talk about everything except swimming on that channel, where I talk more about everyday life, self improvement, maybe it'll be a little bit of fitness, and、uh, yeah, what's going on in the news lately. Check out my new YouTube channel. Again, the link is down below if you want to watch it or listen to it. The links are down below. So please check them out, subscribe, and thank you. Today's topic we're going to talk about private versus public pools. Now, <laughs> if you haven't swam in both of these scenarios, then you're missing out on two completely different worlds. And I have been swimming in public and private swimming pools. Pretty much like 50 50 throughout my swimming journey. I used to live in a condo that had a private swimming pool for me to access, and that's where I filmed most of my early、uh, swimming videos that you see on this channel. I'm just going to lay out the basic characteristics of both of these types of pools, and then it's up to you to decide which one is your favorite. But、uh, I can already tell which, which one's the winner based on this recent poll I put up in the Facebook group, as you can see. And by the way, if you haven't joined our group, click the link down below. So, first off, I started my journey swimming in public pools. All right. So, I was a typical little kid, went to public swimming lessons at the community center on a Saturday, Sunday afternoon. Bunch of kids. Yeah, that's where we trained. But later on, it wasn't until many, many years later on, after I became a lifeguard and all that, that I discovered private pools. You know, for me back then, like a private pool was just out of the question, unless I was on holiday, you know, like with the family, like going to Disneyland and staying at a hotel resort. And then you have access to the hotel pool, you know, that, but that's like once throughout the whole year. Private pools didn't really come into my journey till later, later, later on. When I moved into a condo that had access to one. From there, it unlocked a lot of different things that I, I couldn't experiment with at a public pool. If you're used to swimming in a public pool, a private pool will be a, very familiar, but not so much. <laughs> I, would, I would label a public pool as more like, like a highway, like a highway road, okay? When you're driving on the highway, you know, there's lines on the road, there's, just, there's, there's standard you know, distance between this line and that, that line from your car, and then everybody follows the rules, mostly, right? The way I would describe a private pool is kind of like having like an open country road. Yeah. So, country road, it's wild, there's no lines on the road, there's no dividers, it's, there's, there's no traffic to deal with, but you're on your own. And I've swam in many private pools around the world, not just in、like、Canada. I swam in Korea and Thailand and Singapore and Malaysia. And all these pools, these private pools, they all have similar characteristics, features that I'll describe. First of all, whoever built these private pools wasn't a swimmer. And I can tell you why. Most of these private pools are very pretty, but they're not functional. And why are they not functional? Well, first of all, the tiles that they use to, to map out their private pools are usually dark colored. And you don't want dark colored tiles when you're swimming laps because you can't see below. You need light colored tiles in order to see the bottom of the pool clearly. And it just brightens up the pool instantly. Another reason is because you need to lay out dividers or just like indicators at the bottom of the pool so you can see where you're swimming when you're doing front crawl, for example. You're looking down, you have to look at that indicator and you just, you just gotta make sure that you're in line. And another thing is that private pools are usually not 25 meters, the standard length, or 50 meters. You will never see a private pool that's 50 meters. And they're all like, They're not rectangular, most of them. Most of them are shorter, like 12 meters, 15 meters. Or they're like jelly bean shaped pools, or this oval, or just odd shaped pools. And the problem with these shapes is that 
they're not optimal for lap swimming. As you can see, like I've tried swimming in these like these weird shaped jelly bean shaped pools. And it's hard because you got to curve around in order to complete one lap. And you can't see where you're going because the, the tiles are too dark. There's no indicators at the bottom of the pool. And it, yeah, it's just, this is completely useless. The good thing about private pools is that not many people swim in them. But that can be a problem as well because most people that use private pools are just tourists or people that don't know how to swim. So they're just playing. They're playing with their kids, for example. I don't know, uh, young couples just goofing off <laughs> in the in the private pool. You know, things that they you don't they don't want you seeing. You know what I mean? These couples. I've met a lot of people that are just amateurs that don't know how to swim, don't know hygiene, like taking a shower before entering the pool, wearing a swim cap, wearing on goggles, doing a basic stroke, and making you making sure like you know. You don't get in the way of other swimmers. You know, there's all these simple things. You're, it's Again, it, it goes back to what I described in the beginning. Private pools are like op open country roads. You know, it's just, it's a free for all. You're on your own. Public pools are the complete opposite. There are rules intact. You know, there are lifeguards on watch, always, constantly monitoring you. There are lane dividers. There are indicators at the bottom of the pool. The water is clear because the tiles are light colored. So you can see at the bottom, all the way to the bottom as you swim in a public pool. Unfortunately, there's just so much traffic in most public pools. You, you, I've, there was never a time where I would be on my, by myself swimming in a public pool setting. Rarely, very rare. There's always about like minimum five people you're sharing a public pool with, I would say. Five. And on top of that, the lifeguards are, which is like three. So there's always like a minimum of like eight people in a public pool, I would say. There's a lot of traffic you got to deal with. And there's just a lot of people you have to share lanes with. And a lot of problems evolve. Like, for example, the more people in a public pool, the higher the chlorine levels, the higher the pool chemicals that are used. So every time I finish swimming laps for hours in a public pool, I'm... I'm always like, just my, my skin is burning. You know, I can feel it, you know, at the end of a session, like I get sick or my skin, you know, it would be itchy and it'd be hard to wash off because that th just tells you the amount of chlorine and chemicals that, that are involved in order to keep the, the water sanitized. Unlike a public pool, private pools are not as like chlorine filled, I would say, uh, I can tell because the water tastes different. It doesn't smell as bad as like that. It doesn't have that chlorine smell as often. So at the end of a private pool swimming session, when I'm swimming laps back and forth, yeah, there's, there's barely any like chemical residue or chlorine residue that I have to wash off, which can be a good thing. The question is, which one is better? Well, it depends on you. I mean... There is no perfect pool, in my opinion. You know, I've swam in so many types of pools. You know, besides public and private pools and beaches and outdoor pools and all that, I, I've I swam in most of them. And I would say there's always a trade-off for every pool that you swim in. Okay, if you're swimming in a private pool, you enjoy it. That's great, but it has limitations. Okay, I mean you can't see where you're going in most of the time. It's the pools are not designed to be standard. <laughs> Most of the time, they're always shorter or they're just oddly shaped. So you got to adapt your swimming. But there's less traffic. And then there's less chlorine to deal with. No lifeguards to deal with. There's no kids to deal with most of the time. Eh, except for weekends. Yeah, the kids, families come in. But yeah, kids can be hell no matter what pool you swim in. But for public pools, you know, you get your standard length. You always know where you're swimming. You got your dividers. You got your rules set in place. You got lifeguards that can help monitor you. But again, you, you got to deal with the trade-off. There's just a high number of people, traffic, just foot traffic going in and out, and just the high chlorine levels. And you got to pay every time to use it. 
and you got to deal with the pool schedule, like uh, Aquafit or just water polo. And last night there was like a swim meet uh, that was taking place at my pool that I was going to swim at. And I knew that I couldn't swim at all. You'll get sick. More people, more people pee, higher chlorine, and then you get sick. And I get, I feel it afterwards. Every time. Every time. These are my thoughts on public versus private. There is no perfect pool out there for me. Anyways, I mean, if I had to choose, it would be a public pool with no people in it. With l very little to no chlorine. But that's like a fantasy. <laughs> it's never going to happen. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to have to buy my own pool one of these days. But anyways, let me know your thoughts down below. Your experiences on public versus private pools. And uh, if you haven't already, subscribe to this YouTube channel. Like this video. Hit the bell. Bing! And uh, I will talk to you in the next video. Okay, bye-bye! <laughs>